everyone welcome to today's video on percent change and percent error so we're still in our percent unit we've already learned how to find the part the whole and the percent using both the percent proportion and the percent equation um, and then last video and last class we learned about markdowns and markups so that is an example it's an application of using the percent proportion and percent equation relating to finance and money so today when we're talking about the percent change um, markdowns and markups are really examples of percent change, so we're just broadening this, the scope a little bit. Um, and then percent error is also connected. So we're not going to be defining any new equations, we're just going to continue using the percent proportion and percent equation, but it's going to be our job um, and our goal, the hardest part of what we're going to be doing is identifying in word problems what number is the part, what's the whole, and what's the percent. So building on what we did in our last video, I have some real world examples of the parts, percents, and wholes. And what I have in yellow, that's new um, from the last video. So today we'll be thinking of the parts as the amount of change when we're looking at things changing and we're trying to find the percent change. The part will be the amount of that change. And then when we're seeing percent error, it's also going to be the amount of the error. That's going to refer to the difference between the measured or estimated value of something and then the actual value, and that's called the error, the amount of that error. For our percent portion, that's going to be what is the percent change, so we might have a percent increase or a percent decrease. And then we have percent error, so that's talking about, again, this difference between the measured or the estimate value and the actual value, and thinking about relatively how far off are we based on that percent relatively compared to the actual value? How far off are we? And then our whole is going to be the actual value for the percent error. Um, so not the estimate, but the actual one. And then we also have the original amount is always going to be our whole. So it could be the original cost or price. It could also just be the original number of people, the original amount, our starting value. All right, so that will always be our holes. So let's look at three examples, one of a percent increase, one of a percent decrease, and one of a percent error question. Okay, so we'll start with a percent decrease example. Last year, Miss Deliotis had 600 Instagram followers. This year, she has 528 followers. Sad face. What is the percent decrease in the number of her Instagram followers from last year to this year? So I lost Instagram followers, that's sad, so it decreased. The number that I had went down from 600 to 528. I can figure out, and that's going to be necessary here, how many Instagram followers I lost. That's one thing. But I want to find the percent decrease, which is thinking about relative to all the Instagram followers I had, how many of those did I lose? This is going to set me up for comparison. So let's say that I have a friend who had 5,000 Instagram followers, and then now she only has 4,700. We could also figure out the percent decrease from her, and then we would be able to compare the values more, more appropriately. Okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, like always, we're going to be identifying the missing information and then trying to, to solve for a missing value. So I said that my whole is always going to be the original, right? The starting amount. So in this case, that's going to be how many I had last year, right? That's what I'm starting with in this situation. So last year I had 600 Instagram followers. So that 600 is going to be the whole. This year she has 528 followers. Okay, so you can see on my picture, I, uh, I made that purple. How many I have the next year, that's not my whole part or percent, right? That's a new value. That's not it because what my part is the amount of the change, not the new value. But So what I'm going to need to do is use that 528 to figure out the amount of the change, okay? And that amount of the change, like we saw, is going to correspond with my part. I'm just going to color this in here. That blue, the amount of followers that changed, that's going to be uh, my part. Okay, so I can subtract those to find the difference. I had 600 Instagram followers. Now I have 528. When I subtract that, I get 
72. Guys, okay, so I had 72 followers that unfollowed me in the past year. Again, a major bummer. So that 72, that is my amount of change. Thus, it is going to be the part. The whole is going to be the original number of Instagram followers, which I already said was that amount in red, 600. And then I need to find the percent decrease. All right, so for me in this problem, I'm going to use um, the percent proportion. I think that's easier, but you could use either with enough algebra. Okay, so I rewrote the percent proportion and then I substituted in 72, the amount of change for my part, and 600, my original number of Instagram followers for my whole. And now I'm just gonna solve this proportion to find the percent decrease. Okay, so I'll do it with my equivalent uh, ratio method. How do I get from 600 to 100 by either multiplying or dividing? 600 divided by 6 equals 100. So then I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. 72 divided by 6. And 72 divided by 6, maybe I don't know that. Maybe let's just do a real quick review of long division. Do that off to the side. How many times does 6 go into 7? Once. So 1 times 6 is 6, then I subtract and carry down the 2, so 7 minus 6 is 1, carry down the 2 and I get 12. Now how many times does 6 go into 12? Twice. 2 times 6 is 12, so I get that my answer is 12. Okay, so 72 divided by 6 is 12, 72 six hundredths is equal to 12 hundredths. So I have a percent decrease of 12%, a 12% decrease in Instagram followers for Miss Celiotis in that one year. Notice that I wrote 12% decrease. I didn't just write 12%. Um, it's important for these percent change that we're indicating whether it's a percent increase or a percent decrease. All right, let's try a percent increase question. Amazon stock price in March 2020 was about $2,000. During the pandemic, from March to July, the stock price went up by 55%. What was Amazon stock price in July 2020? This is real data. It's rounded a little bit, but this is real data. Um, Amazon stock went up a lot during the pandemic because people were ordering things instead of going out the stores. Um, it's really a shame how much money they made given the fact that so many small businesses were really hurt during the pandemic, but that's the reality of what happened. So Amazon ended up making a lot of money um, and their stock price went up because that's kind of how stock prices work when they're making a lot of money or if people believe that they will be making a lot of money in the future, then stock prices go up. Okay, so we want to figure out what did it go up to? We know that the original amount in March 2020 was 2000 my original and the original. Does that go with my part, my percent, or my whole? Yeah, that's going to be my whole. And then I have my percent change was a 55% increase. And I'm trying to figure out then what's the new price. Okay, so that's not going to be super straightforward. It's not going to be direct because again, that's like what I shaded as purple, right? That's going to be what I get when I take my original and I add my part. My part being the amount of change. So in this case, that means how much did the stock price go up by? Okay, so that's what we're going to solve for in this question. Okay, so I rewrote the percent equation, and then I substituted in the information that I was given. So my whole, again, that's the original cost of the stock in this case, is $2,000, and I have a 55% increase on that. And that's going to give me, when I multiply those, the amount of the change, $1,100 here. That's the amount of change in Amazon stock price from March to July. Okay, so it went up here. It's a percent increase. It goes up by $1,100. The last thing I need to do is I'm going to add the original $2,000 plus the amount of the change, $1,100. And when I do that, I will get 
$100. Okay, again, when I'm adding these together. So the current Amazon stock price as I'm making this video in July 2020 is $3,100. In science class, a student estimated the mass of an object to be 328 grams, but upon carefully measuring it, they found the actual mass to be 342 grams. What is the percent error? Okay, so we're seeing that there's this estimated value of 325 grams, but the actual value is 342. So the percent error is like, how far off are we really? How significant of an error is that? So again, we can find the actual difference in those values. That's just the amount of the error. And like usual, the amount of the error, just like the amount of the change, that's gonna be our blue, AKA our part. We're gonna try to find that, but then we really need to find the percent of that error to think about relatively how important it is. Okay, I will use the percent proportion here. So I'm gonna write that down. And now let's identify what we're given. So we wanna find the whole, we are given the whole. Is the whole gonna be the 325 grams or the 342 grams? Well, let's go back and check what I said the whole was in these problems. The whole is the original or the actual value. So we're comparing it to the actual value when we're doing percent error. So which is, what is the actual mass of this object? Yeah, 342 grams. So that's gonna be my whole. And then I need to find the part because what I'm solving for ultimately is this percent error. So I'm gonna to need to solve my proportion to find the percent error. So my first step is gonna be finding the part, which again is the amount of error. And I colored that in blue here. How do I do that? Well, I can subtract 342 grams minus 325 grams and I subtract that and I'm gonna get 17 grams. So that's the amount of change. The difference between the actual value and the estimated value was, 18, was 17 grams. Okay, so that will be our part and then we can use that to find the percent error. So I substituted my values. So our option here is we could either um, figure out a number we multiply or divide by to get from 342 to 100 and then do the same thing in the numerator. That is a great option. It's what I often show you, but I do want to remind you of a little bit easier method, honestly, that we have here. If I think about this algebraically, my percent is currently being divided by 100. So I'm going to ask myself, I'm trying to find the percent, the percent error. How do I undo dividing by 100? I multiply by 100. Okay, so I can do that to both sides. And when I do that on the left hand side, I just get the percent error that I'm trying to find. And on the right, I just have to multiply 100 times 17 divided by 342. And I'm just ultimately multiplying these fractions. If it's helpful for you, remember 100, we can rewrite as 100 divided by one. And when you do that on a calculator, 4.97, and then it's gonna be 0, 0,76, it goes on forever, it's not a rational number, it goes on forever without a pattern. So we're just gonna to have to round. I'm gonna to round to two decimal places. Um, I have a zero as a third decimal place, so that will not round my seven up, it will keep it as is. So we're gonna go with 4.97% error. So that percent error talks about relatively how far off is our estimate from the actual. Um, and it matters more than the amount of error because like in this case, let's say instead of grams, we're talking about jelly beans in a jar. Let's say that there are 342 jelly beans in a jar and I guess that there are 325 jelly beans. You're probably gonna be like, oh, that was a pretty good guess. You were only 17, gram it's like 17 jelly beans off or about 5% off. But if there were three jelly beans in a jar and I said that there were 20, you'd be like, what are you talking about? How do you think that there are 20? You're 17 grams off. That's a huge difference, right? Because the percent of that I messed up, the percent error is huge. So just thinking about that, it's really the percent error that um, means more in the world. And it's more important thus than the amount of the error. Awesome, great job, everyone.